um, style or substance. Yeah, you think I look smart? Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Ooh. It's Angus upstairs, right? When you ask someone that question, that they, even if they think it's style, they say substance. Whereas Oswald just said style, much more important than substance. And I just thought, oh my God, this, what an idiotic reply. Do you agree with that? That's interesting. But his attitude is, you can't have style if you don't have substance. And, and I think that's really about his suit, is about trying to get that substance which is inside the various characters, you know, his clients or himself, and get that out. Well, I think what he's saying is, is he knows that when I create, there's always great meaning to it. Is he saying, yeah, of course, Ozzel actually put style for substance, because it's, for him, it's the same. Angus. Hey. Where are you, mate? I'm in here. Come over here. Listen, I, you know, I haven't been up here for a while, you know. No? Well, I'm wow, you've really done. done the place up, mate. Yeah? <laughs> hey, wow. Hello. Wow. <laughs> wow. Hello. How Hi. are you? How are you doing, this mate? This is Simone over here. Hey, Simone. This is Oswald. Wow, wow <laughs> Simone. <laughs> can, I, can I have some Hi. makeup and lipstick? Well, I was just telling him that you're quite obsessed about your hair as well. Oh, absolutely. I've had to go with you quite a few times to get your... <laughs> yeah, shave. I want, I want <laughs> to shave as well. Oswald. Do you remember this? What is it? What? Let me see. Do you remember this? This is my wedding wow. suit. Wow. Wow. That's a wow. that's a black tie that you wow. got me. This one is the one that you made for the wedding. I, I wear this all the time, so it's, I'm wearing it out. Come this on. is the wedding here. I mean, I don't, have you ever seen these photographs? I'm not sure I have. This you is know. actually I haven't looked at these in years, but this is actually this is Mia. Look at how pretty she looks. This is me. This is all getting ready. But wow. then you came wow. in. <laughs> Wow. You see? Wow. It's me hanging out. Yes. That's great. It's all up in, up in St. Moritz. I had to do your pampering, right? Yeah. You were, <laughs> I wasn't going to allow you to go out there on your own. And you remember? Into the big world. <laughs> wow, this is amazing, mate. Wow. Look, Pre Madonna look, days. Yeah. <laughs> look at Guy. Look at him. You were very jealous that day. I was. Because you oh, realized I wow. had a better bow tie on than you did. Yes, you did. You know? You did, actually. In fact, in fact, you know? No, no, hang on. You did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is two years after we did the fashion show in Paris, yeah, right? exactly. And I just remember this, 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 this mass of people at the gate, and you couldn't get in, and you had the cavat you know, the yeah, red bow tie right, and the guys right, outside. That's right, that's right. And suddenly you realized it was happening, and it was like a real fashion show. But also, also remember that um, we made the short film. Basically, the that the invite, and basically the invite created its own, uh, uh, had its own magic. Today, it sounds quite normal and natural mm. to do a video-based promotion of something, and at the time. No, I mean, this is like, you know, this beautiful kind of music video type invitation. And it was a That's hugely true. ballsy move, you know. Yeah, and the fashion press was like, who is this guy? Exactly. Do you remember how it felt when you came out afterwards, the whole show was done, well, you had to walk out? Well, the thing, the thing about that is... I felt lost, actually. I think only after the show, it was only then that I went, wow, I've really done something special. I'd put every penny I had in the world you know, on on this fashion show for no real apparent reason other than I knew I had to do it. And so I, I came back from that thinking, right, now I've risked everything, and what was it for? It was a, a, an emptiness. It was almost as if, uh, in a way, after I'd done the show, it's like I'd done everything.
there was something inside that just said that uh, it was the right thing to do and something was going to happen. But the thing is, I wasn't quite clear what it was going to be. You know, I thought maybe this guardian angel would just fall in my lap and, you know, cut me millions of pounds to own open shops around the world. But it didn't come in that way, it came in a different form. And it came in the form of, I got a phone call from Japan, from a store, who wanted to place an order. Not a big order. It was about, uh, the order was about 10,000 pounds, I remember. And what that did is it opened a door in Japan that I never could have anticipated. And it opened me into that 10,000 pound business, went to a half a million pound business before I could blink. And it was the reason why I was able to open the store. It financed the shop on Vigo Street. It opened my, it opened my store on Savile Row. Let's have a look. Mm. Yeah. My arrival here was, hey was I wouldn't say noisy, but it was, uh, it was very clear that I was here. But what's interesting as well, and now I'm thinking back, also, you know, the area wasn't like this. Because it was, you know, Savaro was really quiet, and it was quite, um, you know, it, it, it was looking for a new energy. After the recession, I mean, so it was like going from 1990 to, I'd say, 94. You had such a bleakness. I mean, quite literally, the, the air stood still. And so suddenly it was like, you know, you had a few people who seemed to, or creative people who seemed to sort of cross that void. Kind of like lit the, the 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 fuse on this whole concept of cool Britannia. You know, it was like you know Britain was cool, and and uh, and I was a part of that. Savaro means to me, in a way, what it is to be traditionally British, I think. A tailored suit kind of symbolizes what it is to be almost a, a British man, you know? When I discovered Savaro when I was about 18, 19 years old, I, it, it was a dying street. savaro has got to be one of the most famous streets in Britain, and, in a, and uh, yeah, it's never talked about. I love traditions. We know that if traditions do not evolve, you know, they die. I believe that it had to stay alive. I knew that if I could influence this street in terms of what tradition represented and that's in cut you know how traditional suits have been cut i could also influence the perception as well of what it is to be british let's go downstairs let me show you the the cutting room Net to waist, not not all the way down to the bottom. Wow, this is like a mohair, classic mohair. But then you look at it, and just look at the shape, the cut in here. The thing about this is, which is really important, is the shape gives a sense of giving a slimmer form. So automatically, you think when uh, a man is maybe a 46 or even a 48 or even a 50.